A little different crowd than normal. So then you go from uh, preparing to defend Tom Brady to Lamar Jackson, and now it's Patrick Mahomes. Uh, the, that the beauty of the postseason? The challenges just uh, always get tough each week? It is. It's really no different than the regular season, if you think about it. I mean, we face all those guys sometimes during the season. Every week it's a different offense. It's a different group of guys, different group of receivers, different running backs. I mean, it's, it's the same. It's just... You know, every week gets tougher because now at this point in time, everybody's a, I mean, everybody's a good football team during the year. I've always said that. I, this, this league is so unpredictable, and it's unpredictable because everybody's got good players. So to me, it's the same way, it's like preparing every week. This is number two against Mahomes this year. What, what, what jumps out when you see him? What are the biggest challenges when you face a guy like that? He's got he's got an unbelievable arm. Could throw off his back foot. He's got great accuracy while doing that. He's not a guy that just stands in the pocket. He can move around. Um, he's you know he's just hard to get to. You know he's hard to sack. He's hard to get to. He, he's extremely accurate, but at the same time he's also can run. I mean he's hurt people with his with his legs running the ball. If you don't have good rush lanes and aren't disciplined, he's going to take off and run on you and, and gain some yards. So. Uh, I mean, to me, he's a complete quarterback. Do you feel like Correa's made strong gains this year, and what specifically have you seen from him? Yeah, I think he's he's uh, come a long way. Uh, but I, I liked him when I was in Baltimore with him, to be honest with you. So uh, I've always kind of felt like saw a lot of potential in him in Baltimore. Didn't think we always used him quite like we should have. Uh, I think he's really grown into the position. I think he's done a – uh, really, really great job. He's really taking it very, very seriously, and and not that he didn't always, but um, you know, I just I, I think he's done a really good job. He, what about he's done. Uh, David Long? How much did he grow? Has he grown? How much did he grow last uh, week? And a lot. He's he's kind of baptism under fire a little bit. He's he's done a great job. Again, he's a guy that's all our guys are. I, I can't say enough about our guys being conscientious and really buying into everything. And during the week, you guys don't get a chance to see him like in the classroom. Uh, but to me, sometimes that tells me as much as a coach as it does out on the field. I can tell if guys are really sitting in there listening and really paying attention and doing the things that they ought to be doing when they're not playing. It's easy when you're a starter to sit there and start writing everything down and knowing that I'm going to do this, going to do that. It's a little harder for backup guys if they don't really think they're going to get in. It's like you're talking about a specific point or, or some kind of a tendency or something like that. A lot of times guys, you can kind of look at them and they're, yeah, yeah, okay. But they don't think they're going to get in. And the guys that are really good are the guys Then all of a sudden when something happens in a game, you can put them in and they know, they remember what you said or they wrote it down and they studied it. Long's been that guy. Our guys are that way. I, I can't say enough about the whole group. I just really feel when I look around the room, like I say, I'm – I was a school teacher before I was a coach, or when I was a coach, when I was a high school coach. And I think that's always been a great advantage because I can see, I don't st I stand in front of the classroom, not behind the classroom. And, you know, I can see guys' eyes. I can see guys that are nodding off. I can see guys that are paying attention. I can see guys that are writing. And I always remember that. And I know I can count on those guys, and our guys are that way. What are some of the things in Jarrell Casey that, that – make you comfortable having a, yeah, a stand-up edge guy as well as playing inside as a, you know, like a, a Kind of the same player. thing. It, it, it just, he just, he understands football. Um, let me give you a good example. Uh, as good an example as I can probably give you, another guy like that was Mike Vrabel. Mike Vrabel was an outside backer for us. That's what everybody remembers. He was a defensive end in college, okay? He ends up being an outside backer. There was a time at New England where we had to play him as an inside backer. Okay, he's not really necessarily built that way because he's long and tall and you know a good pass rusher off the edge. Plugged right in. Never missed a beat because he knows football, understands football. I'm not necessarily putting Jarrell in that case as far as really the whole scheme and everything, but he's one of those guys you can put him in nose, you can put him a three technique, you can put him outside. If we probably wanted to stand him as an inside backer, I'm going to say that's what he would be, but he would probably know what to do. That, that's the thing about it. And it's like I say, go back to the classroom, understanding football, understanding what we're trying to do. What is it like to prepare for a guy like Terry Hill who just has the, the speed? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how you go against – I mean, he just – he's a dynamic, dynamic player. 
I mean, he's not only fast, he's really quick. I mean, he can just change direction quickly. He's, he's uh, just a really, really good athlete and plays hard. You know, that's the other thing is there's guys out there that are very talented. That you look at them and you can kind of talk to your defensive backs and some guys about, yeah, this guy goes hard when he thinks he's getting the ball. This guy doesn't go hard when he's not getting the ball. And you guys, you guys have seen him. He goes hard all the time. So you, you don't ever know when he's not getting the ball. He's a dynamic player. They, but they get, he's not the only one now. Number 14 pretty good. 17 is fast. 11 is pretty good. I mean, they got a bunch of good players. I mean, we haven't even talked about the tight end. So, I mean, it's just that they're a dynamic, dynamic offense with just a, as much talent, if not more talent, than everybody in the league. How much this league do you have to harbor with, with your guys about how, how quickly they came back from a 24-point deficit last week? It, but that's why you, you ought to prepare every week. Every team's got the ability to come back. I mean, it, that's, like I just said, they're a dynamic offense. Anybody that's got an offense like that has got the ability to come back. Uh, but every team also has the ability to come back. There's... I don't think anybody can ever feel like you've got a comfortable lead in this league ever until there's two minutes to go and you're up by about three scores, then you might have a chance. You know, they're, when you've got that much speed and that much talent on the field, they're never out of a game. It sounds like it's a pretty easy decision for you to come out of retirement and to come back again this year. Are these kind of the moments that you came back for just postseason, playing in an AFC championship game, hoping to get back to a – Super Bowl. Well, certainly, I mean, it's certainly a benefit. I mean, but that's that's not really why I came back. I came back because of the players, because of this city, because of this coaching staff. I mean, that's really why I came back. Whether we had gone to the AFC Championship or the Super Bowl or whatever it is, I, that wouldn't have been, you know, I got to come back because we got to do this. I came back because of those people, because of people, not because of wins and losses or anything like that. Now, is it a benefit and a bonus? Absolutely. Am I really happy about it? Yeah, I'm real happy about it. But that's not why I came back. Uh, you talked about the inside linebackers earlier. What, what role has Wesley played this year, even though he hadn't been on the field you know, as much as he was last year, in terms of kind of guiding some of those uh, younger guys, like even David Long, for instance? In 47 years of coaching, I have never respected a player more than I do Wesley. Never. Put in a tough situation when you're always a leader and you play a long time and then all of a sudden there's a younger group comes along. It's sometimes like a coach who's been a head coach, maybe been a coordinator, and all of a sudden then they have to become a position coach. Sometimes that's a hard thing to do because you have all these ideas that you want to spew out there and guys aren't really listening to you anymore because you're not the coordinator or the head coach. West, West was put in that, that position, but you would never know it. Ever, whether it be in the classroom, whether it be on the field, never. And for a guy, that takes a lot of, you know, he's a prideful guy, but that just takes a just a mature leader to be able to do that stuff. He is invaluable to, to our defense in that regard. And being able to help the younger guys and tell them, well, here's what you ought to be looking for and all that. So, again, in, in all my years of coaching, and I been around a lot of great linebackers and a lot of great people and a lot of great players. Uh, he has my utmost respect. Have you told him that? Absolutely told him that. Told a couple guys on this team that.